topic of today's lecture is Bayline Diagramming Method. So, what is uh, Bayline Diagramming Method? This is a very simple lecture compared to any other any other topic we have seen so far. Now, what is this topic primarily about? So, let us uh, introduce little on the background side first. So far in information management we have seen DSM ok. DSM I have shown you as to how to represent information, but primarily it was like uh, only one relationship between any two activities or any two deliverables and so on. You would have seen only one relationship ok. And uh, DSM can also be very powerfully used for representing construction uh, a phase also for representing the workflows in construction projects as well you can still use that also I have shown you how to do and so on. Okay. Now, what is this BDM representation as I given the hint right now. So, when you are having multiple information flows between any two teams or any two components and so on then you should look at a technique like BDM for representing and for analysis ok. So, what happened? So, have we not dealt all these earlier? Have we not come across multiple information sharing earlier and so on? Yes, we did so. Suppose for example, if you want to see the history with which we have come across this I have also shown when we were uh, discussing on DSM uh, the introduction to DSM ok. Earlier we were very comfortable in making assumptions all the assumptions were in the schedulers mind only and the activities were represented and they people were very happy to go with sequential and parallel relationships alone. Then came in techniques like simulation, DSM and so on wherein people could easily define the sequence, do schedule analysis with uh, multiple options, constraints and etcetera. So, the cyclic representations in a way we call it as cycles um, or interdependencies they were we could easily represent this happened maybe since 2000 and so on ok. So, BDM is a very recent concept which has come only in 2012-13 and so on. So, the person who developed this BDM was Kim ok. So, BDM the abbreviation is B line diagramming method ok and these lines are primarily called as B lines. So, if you are having a problem like if you are having a problem which you have to represent like this in multiple information relationships then you have to really go for BDM only ok. Now, what are these? There are other terminologies also for representation for representing this uh, concept. One is called overlaps. You can see here A, B, C are primarily overlapping and uh, with each other. So, in a way we can call it as an overlap, but the real overlap as you see in BDM that is not the case. So, this is like I would not say an advanced overlap, but it is too much of information relationships and typically you are doing a overlap. Okay. And in the last class I in the previous one or two classes earlier I have introduced what is called linkages. Linkages are nothing but or links they primarily need not follow the conventional finish start relationship. So, they are these are all called linkages. I can start anywhere from my predecessor and I can stop anywhere at my successor ok. So, for this prime for this particular linkage so A is a predecessor and C is a successor ok and I can start anywhere in the flow and I can stop anywhere. So, it is not following the conventional finish start nor it is following like PDM representations wherein you are able to show start start finish finish start finish and so on. So, it, you can actually you know it actually directly connects the predecessor and successor at the relevant points ok. So, links are primarily the shortest travel distance or shortest distance between any two uh, activities or any two deliverables or any two teams and so on. So, they are primarily called linkages. So, these B lines are the linkages ok, they are also called B lines and they are also called linkages ok. If you want to give a proper uh, definition for the linkages then this is a proper definition we have come across. So, one is multiple you can represent so many relationships or information exchanges among any two activities. Then it also is a two way it is not like I am only having all relationships only in one direction. I could actually represent all the relationships between any two activities 
okay i am not having only one side of communication flows i am actually having two way communication flows okay a can also give information to b b can also give information to c to a so it is multiple it is also two way information exchanges okay so that's where you, we are actually in bdm okay this technique as i told is a very recent origin and uh, we have developed and we found that it is a very useful technique for uh, representing an information flows in design phase okay and what is a bdm representation right now having known that uh, i can represent multiple information flows and so on and it is a technique for uh, um, scheduling uh, in design phase then primarily you should know how are you representing the time a uh, phase of all the relationships because information is driving your schedules here okay so let us assume i have two activities activity a activity b and the duration for a is given as 10 duration for b is given as 12 so i have these two activities and i am representing there are three ways of representation as given by kim but we are only going to show only one representation which is n1 Uh, dash n2 okay n1 is primarily the time it takes to show my uh, time from which the from the predecessor what time the information can be released and n2 actually represents the time at which the information is received by the successor okay that is how the information is represented as a linkage so n1 n2 is a linkage and it shows the time at which so n1 from the start of a activity what is the time what is the time it takes to release the to release the linkage maybe i can call this linkage as p1 okay this may be it's a parameter so this time that takes to from the parameter p1 to be released from a n1 and the same parameter p1 is required by b at the time called n2 okay that's how the bdm representation goes okay now how can i get uh, information directly from the site for this okay for the first project obviously it's very difficult for you to get an appropriate information i would still say you will get information on different different parameters or different deliverables and so on you can still get it but if you want to really work maybe on abstract level like components or teams you can okay you can still draw a bdm okay i may have so many teams i may have different different deliverables coming in out of the those teams still i can form a bdm and i can still go ahead with that so this example is primarily teams and parameters i have shown you teams and parameters if you want to get information like this and work out with the parameter level on the teams or components then you should have done at least one or two projects earlier okay then only with that expert a uh, domain expertise that you have you will be able to say what time what parameters can be released and so on okay because the n1 n2 you won't be able to define unless you have done one or two projects earlier especially when you are working on working in the lowest level of your wbs okay abstract levels of wbs yes you can still uh, do it for the first projects so i am taking a highway design uh, case okay there are three teams here this is a truncated example it's not a complete example i am just only to showcase the relationships that travels across the three teams three teams are there duration for the three teams uh, uh, this is taken from the time the three teams were on the whole project 240 days uh, highway design team was on the whole project 156 days structures design team was has spent the time in the whole project hydrology design team has spent almost like 50 days in the whole project okay now so first link 14 6 so this implies this is my predecessor so this time is primarily 14 and the time with which it is reaching the structures design team is 6 so what is the uh, information that is traveled alignment details proposed bypasses and the cross section width okay so these are the information which has uh, reached the structures design team okay now let us stay see from hydrology to structures design team at the time 25 6 so this is primarily 25 okay and this is my 6 at the same time 
structures design team is actually receiving two inputs one from highway design team and one from hydrology design team from the hydrology design team high high flood levels low water levels and so on are received from here okay now let us see what other informations are travel once this information is received by the structures team the structures team starts working on their design calculations and it can actually send structure improvement embankment slopes details to highway design team so time frame is 8 and this is now 21 okay now that is how you have to understand that at the same time uh, high hydrology design team is releasing information linear waterway and number and length of the spans to structures design team then after some time structures design team is releasing vertical clearance to the highway design team okay then finish road level at 1634 then from the highway design team after getting all the inputs it releases highway cross sections to structures design team okay then design discharge is released from hydrology design team to structures design team so like this the flow continues and all other informations between these teams are really exchanged i have not shown the complete list this is only to show um, what is the detail okay in this case all these were parameters which were exchanged between the three teams and other case okay let us see the other case which is a metro construction example okay this is a metro uh, design example and this example i have introduced you to show the complex information exchange between different teams and in any project you may have so many teams and there may be complex interactions between all these teams that i have introduced you at that time now let us i am going to take the same example right now okay so this team this particular example 20 teams we have taken out and for the within a span of 3 years there was close interaction with with all the teams that was there okay now the three teams which i am going to take for uh, today's class will be uh, for explaining the bdm representation will be contractor team structural design team electrical and mechanical team okay now let us see the three teams so i have given a short uh, symbol for the three teams so structural design team electrical and mechanical team and there is a contractor so there are three teams given here okay and there are few deliverables uh, there are few deliverables as a part of the three teams okay so the deliverables are listed out here preliminary design and design reports def definitive design and design reports construction reference drawings for cutouts these are the three deliverables from the structural design team okay and i am having four deliverables from the electrical and mechanical team uh, which is uh, foundation layout and sizes access for flooring access for finishing handover to client so there are four deliverables as a result from the electrical and mechanical team okay from the contractor there are there are five deliverables okay which is what we have uh, come across handing over to client architectural drawings access for first fix items access for second fix items integrated testing and commissioning and uh, sorry this handing over of to client is coming from the other team as well okay so so now let us see the bdm representation here okay so these are the same example i have shown it the same example i have used here so that it is easy for you to go ahead because i am using only symbols here for representing because of the too many um, too many uh, text written on the slide okay this is my structural design team electrical and mechanical team and this is my contractor team so these are the three teams that i have and all the uh, deliverables which are all you know shared between the teams are all listed here and there is a short um, abbreviation used for all these deliverables the time duration or linkage between these deliverables are all shown here okay now let us move on into analysis because you are more worried about how to do my scheduling with information exchanges so let us see how to do the analysis same way like your earlier uh, network analysis you will have forward pass backward pass and float okay so in the forward pass there is a formula written and again um, let me also say something so in the bdm network analysis just like your pdm network analysis you can still do two ways of analysis one is the activities uh, can be interrupted 
and the other cases activities can be continuous ok. In the particular method where I have written all the formulas and I am going to explain you with an example we are assuming the activities are interruptible in the middle which implies the activities can be broken down as and when the progress can happen and the critical path are accordingly calculated ok. Equally in other method of contiguous um, execution is also possible and the forward pass backward pass calculations are accordingly different you will have a different formula for the same ok. So, I am not going to narrate the story on how these equations have come if you are interested you can go through research papers and you can still see ok. So, we are only going to see the equations explanations and how do we apply in uh, a project ok. So, this is EET which is implies early event time. So, we what we are going to do is we are going to take an simple hy example and at the point of the linkages ok. So, wherever there is a link we are going to break down this into break down the highway design into different sub parts ok and we are going to treat this as sub activity of hydro of the highway design ok. So, I am having highway design sub activity 1, sub activity 2, sub activity 3, 4, 5 and so on. So, accordingly you may have to uh, define uh, stop that ok and if you want to find the time at which these links are coming in then I may have to treat it in terms of nodes. So, I am going to work in terms of events only the nodes primarily to me are my events. So, I am going to work on event calculations ok. So, what happens is EETJ which implies early event time of an successor which is equal to maximum of the first EET i will be 0 or it is maximum of my earlier links only and the EET j is what you have to calculate which will be maximum of EET i plus duration of the sub activity or the maximum of the two values and the other one is EET of my PL ok. So, what are these terminology? So, EET j is early even time of the current node which is at the jth position not at the ith position and the EET which is equal to early event time. So, primarily the start of that particular event plus duration of the sub activity ok in the same team and or it is maximum of the other value. The other value is primarily the early event time of all the preceding nodes through the preceding links ok. I may have too many uh, predecessor or linkages coming in at that point. So, you have to see the early event time of all the preceding links. So, with that maximum of all these values you will take that value as my ETJ ok. In the backward pass again it is called late event time of i because late event LATJ is primarily the maximum value you are getting with the uh, you are getting at the end for the end, last uh, portion you will take the la maximum of your ETJ and for the previous uh, activities or uh, events you will take the minimum of the values or which has come from the preceding links. So, accordingly what you will do? You will do minimum of LETJ which is from the last node you are traveling minus duration of the particular sub activity you have taken into consideration or LET of my successor links. So, I may have too many succeeding nodes coming out of from the from the same late event you may have to see that and you may have to see whichever is minimum that you may have to take it for my uh, late event time ok. So, which is minimum of LET uh, J. So, LET J is late event time of the succeeding node or event along the same team minus duration of the sub team between the node I and J and the LET SL is late event time of all succeeding nodes through the successor links ok. This may look complicated with an example I think you will understand much better. The next is float, float calculation formula is very clearly given late event time of the successor link minus early event time of the predecessor link minus duration of the activity following similar to your PDM um, analysis ok. So, LET J is late event time of the end node or event of the current sub team and EET I is early event time of the start node or event of the current sub team. Now, let us move on here. So, I have taken a simple hypothetical example all these formulas I have written in one side for you to cross check and then go ahead with the work calculations A's duration is 4, C's duration is 5 ok. 
So, now we are starting with the links. The first link is coming from A to C and the linkage value is given as 2 to 1 okay, which implies A1 the subactivity A1 takes 2 days of time and then it is releasing this and the subactivity C1 it is taking 1 day of time to release my uh, to receive my link from A. Okay. Then there is a next link from here. So, this is actually a truncated portion. Okay. So, now my next link from here. So, at the time of 5 4 which implies from the starting point the duration of this is 5 and from the starting point the duration of this is 4. That is how the notation reads. Okay. So, which implies now what is the duration of my sub portions. So, C 2 is a sub activity here duration of the sub activity is 4, A 2 is a sub activity with the A and the duration of the sub activity is now 2. Okay. Now, let us move on with calculating my forward pass and backward pass. Okay. Now, let me erase this. So, that uh, otherwise it will look it will be overwritten. Okay. Now, so the further let me start with A and early event time I have given some notations here only for understanding only for me to note uh, put it in a tabular form otherwise there is no purpose here you can directly put the values here. Okay. So, this E T of for this particular node okay. for this particular node okay, the E T value is 0 E T for this particular node is given as this is 0 plus duration of this activity is 2 ok. I am going to use this formula here. So, this is 0 plus 2 comma any predecessor link is coming into this there is no predecessor link coming in here. So, this is 0 plus 2 only and that is why I have written E T for this particular place is 2 ok. Now, I am going to uh, start from activity C because the links are coming from opposite side. So, E T for this particular place is 0 and for this particular link my value is 0 plus 1. So, which is equal to 1 and comma I have an other segment here ok E T of the predecessor link. What there is a link which is coming in to me and E T value for that link is 2 ok. So, now what is written here maximum of these two values. So, 1 comma 2 maximum value is 2. So, my E T at this particular place I have I am getting an EET value of 2 at this linkage. Okay. Let us move on into the next link. So, obviously, this is a successor for me and this is my predecessor. So, I have to start working out from here. Okay. So, now what about this value? What about this e early event time? So, early event time is this value is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, that is no predecessor. So, this value I am getting it as 6. Okay. Now, what about my early event time for this particular node. So, I am having 2 here 2 plus 2 is 4 with the help of my predecessor link the value is 6 maximum of these two values is 6 for me. Okay. So, I am getting a value called 6. Okay. Now, let us erase this so that it is easy to show the late event times. Now, let us see the backward pass. Okay. Backward pass we have stopped at this particular point. So, this will be my starting um, node with which you have to start the backward pass. So, late event time for this particular event will be 6. Now, next will be this particular event because the event is the uh, link is traveling from this side. Okay. Now, what will happen here is minimum of late event time minus duration there is no successor activity here. So, you cannot take this. So, this becomes nullified here and what about the late event time of the successor link? I am having a value called 6 that is why you got a value called 6 here. Okay. Now, moving backwards. So, this event this particular event. So, late event time is either I should do 6 minus duration 4 which is equal to 2 or any successor links which I am having. There are no successor links here. So, this value will be taken as will be noted down as 2. Now, let me move this way because the link is traveling here. Now, what about this particular place? So, I am at this particular place. Okay. So, the value is late event time 6 
6 minus duration of this particular activity is 2 which is equal to 4 and the late event time of a successor link ok because I am having a 2 here ok so comma 2. So, what I should do minimum of these 2 values ok uh, 6, 6 minus 2 is 4 here and because of this link I am having a late event time of 2. So, among these minimum value is 2. So, this value is now taken up as 2. Now, I can do this or this anything is fine ok. So, I am going to do this first late event time of this particular node is 2 minus 2 is 0 late event time of this particular node is 2 minus 1 is 1 ok. So, now forward pass is done backward pass is also done ok. Now, let me erase Let us see the float calculations now. Float calculation is very is simple, let us go through that. Float calculation, so it is late event time of 2 minus early event time is 0, so minus duration of this is 2, so this value is now 2. Okay. So, this is 2 minus 0 minus 2 which is equal to 2 ok for this particular segment. Now, let us take this particular segment float of this particular portion. So, float of the sub activity is what I have written I am going to take the float of sub sub activities. So, late event time is of the jth side is 6 minus early event time of the same segment is 2 minus duration of this is 2. So, I will have 6 minus 2 minus 2. So, that will be equal to 2 here. Now, what about uh, this particular segment? So, this is my sub portion here late event time is 6 minus early event time is 2 minus duration of this activity sub activity is 4. So, 6 minus 2 minus 4. So, this becomes 0 here ok. Now, let us look at this particular portion. So, the uh, late event time is 2 here ok. The early event time is 0 minus duration of this particular activity is 1. So, this is now will be 1 here. Okay, that is how the calculations are done. Now, um, so, so far we have seen forward pass, backward pass and also we have seen the float calculations also. Now, we have finished up the entire network analysis. Okay, as per the analysis now what happens? So, this particular activity is taking a 0 float, this particular sub activity is taking a float of 2, this particular sub activity is taking a 0 float this particular sub activity is taking a float of 1 ok. So, now what are my critical paths and how do I show my critical path? My critical path here is A1 with the link and C2 is my critical path here ok because of the 0 floats I have on this particular uh, network ok that is how you have to complete the analysis. So, network schedules how to represent the BDM representation itself you have understood only for one linkage we have seen one type of linkage which is a N1 to N2 and using the three formulas primarily on forward pass, backward pass and float we can also show the individual segments where the path is critical. So, you should not have the impression that every time uh, I should be taking up only the teams and parameters. So far in this example we have seen multiple information uh, links travelling between uh, between parties it can be any link between any two issues. For example, first example I have shown parameters travelling with the teams and in this example deliverables travelling with the teams. So, it can be any link the link can be anything just like in types of DSM here also it can be between teams and components it can be between teams and parameters, teams and deliverables or components and deliverables, components and parameters. So, based on whatever you want you can accordingly develop a different different DSMs of your choice ok. Now, whenever I make this um, uh, information relationships you can this is more like a bar chart when we went to the experts and asked them for opinion and inputs on this BDM example they were very happy to receive this BDM network ok under so many circum issues behind. One is this BDM really looks like a bar chart 
but with lot of information stored in. So, it is not like a basic bar chart, but it has so much of information contained within the bars. Okay, so they were very happy to visualize the entire network by traveling like this. Okay, after this, this deliverable, then after this, this deliverable. So, they were able to see and visualize the entire network more than the network schedules on CPM or PDM and so on. Okay, so they were overwhelmed and received this uh, uh, network with enthusiasm. Okay, but there are some problems in implementing in the in the industry because of the manual method with which we are still working out in calculations okay still now there are no software which can help us to do all the calculations automatically as you can see i also have done mistakes while showing the calculations so same thing ha can happen because of the large values you have with the information flows and sometimes it may be in even in hours and some values may be in uh, when you are converting in days to hours you may get large values like this thousand and so on it is really difficult for somebody to go through with the calculations that you have to keep in mind that is the only one drawback we have in BDM ok. So, so far we have finished DSM and BDM. So, information management, information driven schedules, two schedules we have seen one primarily in iterations this I can see it is partial and interdependent only it cannot support iterations ok it can only support interdependencies but interdependency is multiple information exchanges in two ways ok. So, two different uh, technique which can one can support till iteration and one can support interdependency in multiple links. So, I have shown this thanks.